Hi, welcome to Finite Pi Videos. This is DC here. This video is about a software that works with PN5180 board. So, in my previous videos, I mentioned about two types of boards. One is the one what you see here. This is based on the cheapest P15180 NFC board which you can buy from internet. And this works with uh, any microcontroller. So, I have used the Arduino microcontroller. The other board I showed was the PN5180 evaluation board from NXPay. So, this software is a learning tool. Using this software, you can understand the working of PN5180 board. You can learn about registers, the instructions, as well as the programming using Arduino or any other microcontroller. So, you need the following things. You need an Arduino, this board, and you have to connect this board using SPI. And you can do that with or without the level shifter. And this software runs uh, on a Windows platform. You need uh, Windows 10. It also works on the earlier versions like Windows 7 or 8. So, you'll also get automated uh, automatic updates as and when the software is enhanced. And if you if you want to know where to get this software, uh, please you know take a look at the comment section of this video. So this is the software architecture. So right from the Arduino and and the software and on the PC. So in fact, this is a very a simple way to set this uh, set this uh, working model. In my earlier videos, I mentioned about the PN5180 Arduino library. So, we still use the same library without any changes to the library, except few functions are added. And you have to install a uh, Arduino, that's a PC interface program. So, which is basically a simple decoding of the PC commands and maps to the corresponding the functions in the library. So if you know the if you know programming C or C plus plus, this will be like a simple uh, select and a case statement. The PC software sends the PN five hundred zero command command bytes, which is uh, decoded. There is no a uh, complex decoding done, so it just looks at the command byte and it transfers everything to the corresponding library function so this is the architecture so this is the the graphical user interface software and on a pc so as you can see here this is just just a mapping between the library functions and the command bytes now if you look at the structure of this program so you can also create a very similar uh, software or you can also learn how to um, write programs to do this type of mapping for any other uh, boards as well. These are some of the features of the software. You can edit, you can see all the 32 bits of every registers in the board. You can set or reset individual register bits and write to the board. You can update the EEPROM data, you can uh, view as well. You can build the PN5 instructions and send that to Arduino. And eventually from the Arduino it will go back it will go to the P1580 board. And any response from PN5 board is displayed on the screen. So any so th this software is going to uh, have many updates. So eventually this software will be able to read and write to a, a, a full tag or a proper tag like a MIFE Classic or a MIFE Ultralight or a NFC tags. So some of the advantages of this software is it's uh, some kind of a nice to have tool for students and software developers. So you don't have to spend you know months understanding these uh, features. Probably the software can help you understand. Uh, this PN5180 board. You can quickly learn how to program P1580 board. 
and as I mentioned before the software is not complete so this is the version 1.0 the later versions will have a, a full-fledged uh, feature now this software will be very useful if you use this software along with the PN5180 datasheet so it will be easy in fact you know when you start using the software so you will find it easier to understand this PN5180 data as well. So gradually in this video series, you're going to learn more and more uh, features about PN5180 itself, but uh, I'll be using this software. As you can see here, I've connected my PN5180 board along with Arduino, and also this doesn't have any lever shifter. So this is the very a very small Arduino program that is compiled along with this library and it's already uploaded into this Arduino board as I mentioned in my uh, just a couple of minutes ago this is a very simple software so if you if you understand uh, the programming in fact you don't have to understand what this software does so if, if you if your purpose is to know what this uh, PN532 instruction look like or understand the registers and working of that in fact, you know, you may not be doing any coding at all. So, if you look at here, this is just a simple a, a C switch statement. So, the command byte, the very first byte from the PC is decoded. If the command byte is of type write register, it is going to call the write register of the library. If the command byte is of type write register or a mask, it's going to call this function of the library so like that there are for all the commands that are available in the library so you got a, a series of uh, uh, switch statements here in fact the library doesn't have uh, every instructions that are available in the datasheet some of the commands are added by us and it's also available in the library source code now this is the software this is the Windows software written um, in .NET platform. The software is present called as uh, PN5180 Made Easy version 1.0. So what the software has done here is, it has detected there is a COM port called COM4, and it's also showing the board rate. So the Arduino program is set to receive data at the board rate of 115200. So if you happen to change the Arduino program, you just have to go and change this board rate. So I would keep it 115200, that's, the, that's, the, that's a decent speed. The first thing you do is the connect. Now the software has made connection with the board and this is the only screen you have got in this software at this point of time. Click on the console and this is what the software look like. So using this software, you can you can you know send and understand and learn various registers and various instructions of PN five hundred zero board. In fact, I myself don't know uh, how this you know the the meaning of so many registers. So depends on your your background. If you are a person who want to design the antenna or play with the all the signal level, you can you probably better understand this. But from a, from a software point of view, you got everything you need to know about the registers. Say for example, on the very first tab, it's called registers. So this shows all the registers of PN5180. And if you want to read the content of the register, you just try to go and hit this read button. And this is the most interesting thing about the software. It shows you the various command bytes that are sent to the Arduino and the responses you got here. So read register has got a command byte of uh, 0400 and this is the 4 byte response you got. So in my, in my later videos I'll be probably explaining uh, some of the registers you know which are easy for a software developers and I'll not be you know explaining anything about a register that is that's more about the hardware side about the signaling and timing. So if you just go and click here, you know, as you can see, you can read any registers. So this is the read register command. 
if you want to know if you want to read multiple races at a time you can just select few of them and hit this read multiple register and this is the multiple register command of pn found at zero so it's a very nice tool to if you want to know uh, the command structure you can clear so you can also write assume that I want to change the value of uh, the enable uh, enable uh, IERC enable so as soon as you click so this shows you all the 32 bits with the uh, what is each of these bits called so I would like to write with within a couple of uh, bits on so if you click so it writes now if you click on update so this 32 bit value is transferred to this screen as you can see here and eventually if you hit this uh, write button this sends the write register command to the Arduino which eventually goes to PN580 and at present there's no response from uh, uh, the board so we are assuming that the write is successful if you try to read if you hit this read button you should be able to get the same uh, whatever value you return likewise you got a section where you can see um, the content of all the EEPROM data the data sheet as I mentioned before you have to use the data sheet along with the software so the, the data sheet explains what all these uh, types of data that are stored in the EEPROM some of the data are read only and you can see there are the highlighted with the uh, with the yellow and you can also see here uh, there are uh, this column here uh, tells whether the corresponding values are uh, writable or readable it's, it's readable so it, it tells you whether it's writable or not say for example I would like to write again you have to know what you're writing in this EEPROM so you have to be very very careful um, about what you write because because sometimes it's quite possible that you write something and that might you know make your device uh, completely not functional so I will I shall leave that part to you say for example I would like to I know that RFU is for the future use I can write anything here so I'm going to there are so many say there is one more uh, RFUs here at address the uh, 3d so I'm going to change this to say 3536 and I'm going to hit uh, write now this is the command to write EEPROM and m some of the commands will return a response 01 in fact this is not the response from PN580 this is the response from the, the user interface program we have written so just to now make sure that so that you know the software has given enough timing for EEPROM uh, to write so if you hit anywhere here the read command you can see the corresponding data is read and I'll be going through some of these uh, as and when you know uh, I know more about uh, these EEPROMs you know I'll make a video on that certain things are uh, pretty straightforward here for example you got a product version if you read so this is the version it's uh, 3.5 if you want to know the firmware version and read this again 3.5 and EEPROM version if you read it will be uh, say 0 0.91 so we've got a separate tab here so I, sh I shall be making you know, um, a separate video on this so this is about the configuring the board for various uh, the RFID types so again the data sheet is your best friend now this software makes you know makes you set change the configuration pretty easier so I would like to set you know these are various configuration I can I'm going to set uh, assume that th these settings are for the type 8 tax if you hit this the load button so this sends a load RF config command to the Arduino so which is this is the command byte structure and from this point on the board is ready to read and write any type A tags again as I mentioned in my earlier videos there are no ready to use read and write like a activation or a, a high level commands in the EEPROM in this uh, board EEPROM so most of the functionality you have to provide it in the software so likewise you can read the configuration register 
get config size is also one of the instructions so this says this configuration uh, is stored in uh, eight registers if you say get config registers this list stored in uh, all all the register content again this uh, document so this command is explained very well in the data sheet and as you can see here uh, this is the the content of the names of eight registers some of the registers are uh, you can see are unknown in fact these are all uh, the like a RFC type of registers which I don't think we can access it but you can you can play uh, with the PN 580 board using the software you can you can send whatever command you know you think is right so likewise you can also do the other side so there are two sections here the transmitter configuration and the receiver configuration so I can go and read um, the registers that are affected by the this configuration say read config registers you get uh, around 11 register content and the last one here you got a, a tab called commands this is where you can send whatever command you like so we got a small like a helping tool here if you if you choose this uh, for it go with the easiest one the read register so here this auto populates this text box so this is where you're going to type all the commands and send it all as a bash uh, to the Arduino using this uh, execute button so I'm going to read the register content of register 10 so 0 for space 90 again in order to be you can you can choose whether you want the separator as a comma separation or a hyphen I will stick with the default space if I say execute now this two bytes in fact this is just two bytes are sent to the board and the board you know the board will send these these two commands to the the library of pn 500 and the library returns four bytes of data which is uh, shown on the screen so likewise read the register 00, zero execute you might get in you know, a different number here likewise so like I said you can use all these commands probably some of the commands are are not implemented in software right you know but later releases will do so so for example you can you can uh, play with the RF on the radio frequency on and off so I can turn off the radio frequency so you get a response as 0 1 again this is just to introduce a delay before the next command is sent or you can turn on so so these are the two commands for uh, turning on and off the RF so this is just an overview so I'm going before and I finish this video I would like to show how to activate a uh, MIFAIR classic tag so what I'm going to do is I'm going to reset this board so I'm going to say I'm just going to press this uh, the reset button on Arduino board I'm going to press it so I'm going to start this again so click on the console so first thing is uh, since you know this MIFA classic is a, a type A tags I'm going to load this configuration the transmitter is set to type A of this frequency and receiver as well as uh, 106 I'm going to load so there's no response from there and after that I have a series of commands here now again as I mentioned before I'm going to make uh, many many more videos about uh, how to use this board um, so these are the various uh, these are the commands that are used to activate authenticate and read uh, the block zero of this uh, tag MIFA tag so I'm going to run everything as a batch as you can see here uh, the software recognizes uh, the line starting with two hyphens as a command text as a comments you know these are ignored by the software now if you go and I'm going to place this uh, tag here just on on this PN53 uh, 580 and I think I mentioned before in my earlier videos uh, this board has got a very very uh, a very good uh, antenna so you can keep the tag almost uh, 10 centimeter away from the board it still gets recognized okay I'm going to place it above the board and execute you can see that you know eventually we are able to read the content of block zero so how cool is that so all these you know as I mentioned before there is no single 
command in this board to activate type a tags you have to do this is a very a very nice uh, learning tool as well so if you start using this board you you'll 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 master the concept of uh, how these tags are activated so you'll learn you know what are the qa what's the response gate what's the anti-collision so eventually you're going to learn about all this you know enabling disabling the csc calculations in fact eventually you can see here uh, the last command here uh, is able to read the 16 bytes from block zero